Hey, I'm Harry. I'm in charge of the development at Deluxe, and I'm going to show you the Deluxe uh, Backcountry Collection. People that love the outdoors and then are basically snowboarding, but here and then do a split tour. They are searching for uh, uh, all terrain snowboard boot. It is working all the way for every day uh, ride and they also want to have some extra grip for the backcountry and therefore we developed the Explorer. I'll go in detail a bit later on this. Then we have our gold standard in splitboard boots which we consider is the gold standard. It was the first one. It's Spark XV. We developed it with Xavier Delarue. I think it's more than 10 years now that this boot is in the market and every single year we improved the product and now we are at a level where we feel that it is on point, it is a real classic, it does a great job for everything you need for a mission. During COVID we took the time and hit up Xavier and we're working on a new expedition boot. He was asking for this project since a very, very long time and we always postponed the start of the project. And then with all the, 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 the thing happening, like not, not being forced to travel a lot, they had a lot of time to connect with him and discuss things and then really work in detail and in depth on a project. And uh, the outcome, I think, is a really, really great product. It's the XV from Xavier Delivery. I start with the Explorer. And uh, we, the, the main feature of this that allows this boot to be a good uh, splitboard boot is the Vibram Eastridge outsole. It has the ice track compound that works properly on ice and snow and everything. A deep profile, like, and then the classic that we always have to use this, the saw on the side to have extra traction for the traversing. The edges here and there for hiking up and going down, like a solid product. And then what we did to make this a very good uh, snowboard boot, we reduced the footprint of it and then moved the rubber part inside to make sure that the, the, the length of the boot is really short to give you a good joy, feel, joyful feeling for snowboarding down the hill. It's bulletproof, it's all protected. We have the rubber end all around. We have a high back that protects the boot and connects very well with the binding while strapping in. And then, of course, we have the uh, collar that goes outwards, the XLS system that allows you to go longer strides. And you can tune the boot with a flex booster shield. It's available in three different hardnesses and with this you can steer the flex of the boot. And the setup is very simple. We have an anchor core that locks you down and then a classic place with power strap that makes you set for any mission in any terrain. Explorer. Then the classic and I think I explained this product a lot during the last years on this channel. And basically, yeah, uh, you, you know what you get with the Spark XV. We have the back weld, so you can use semi-automatic crampons. That's the only boot within the collection that still has this feature. It's because it's working good and it's because it, it's made for this, for this boot. But discussing the uh, back weld system with Xavier, we figured out that for a day-to-day -day user that's not really famili familiar with the techniques of using crampons, it is more safe to go the classic way and don't use the semi-automatic crampons because if you fail on fixing them properly, you can be in a dangerous position and therefore we feel that it's more safe for, for the average people that, are not, that they don't have the highest level of uh, skills for the backcountry to use a traditional crampon. So, anyways, on this boot we still use it because the, the, the people that know this product uh, expect this kind of thing. We have the rubber end all around, we have a rubber toe cap to protect the boot and then we have the three zones that are designed in a way that you can fix the red lace and then be safe with your ankle and then keep the other parts open to have more volume for the skinning up process. One thing that's uh, extremely important for using crampons is a very stiff midsole that does not allow the boot to bend and therefore we use a hiking uh, last that's very thick and stable to give this boot a rigidity to be stable for, for the crampon use. Spark XV, very beautiful classic boot.
that we keep having in our line. And now we come to the expedition model. We designed with Xavier and uh, there's a couple of things that he expected to have on this boot. Number one is dry and warm, warm feet. Number two is be as short as possible, be as light as possible. And then the most important for the uh, splitboarding way is be very stiff to uh, medial and natural. That when you go skinning up, the biggest force you have is uh, the side. And if this is stable, uh, you are more stable for, for the height process. We developed this side piece that is a full plastic piece uh, that gives the stability, medial and lateral. And then it also protects your boot from uh, getting scratched within the binding. We have a high back, a full rubber piece high back that protects the, the, the back of the boot. And then uh, we have the X, XLS Pro, which is uh, a system we developed years ago. And that, that allows you to uh, adjust the fit of the collar that uh, allows you to make this boot ready for the way up. And then for the way down, you just close it very simple. And uh, with this, have the full edge-to-edge -edge control. We decided to make this piece extremely simple because we don't want people to, to mess with it when it's cold outside. And a, a Velcro strap does a very good job in, in cold conditions. And then, uh, of course, we have the rubber end all around. Then we have this uh, protection on the side. It is a very rigid mesh that gives you a very light and uh, soft feeling to tighten the boot. And then with this print, we protect it all the way that it doesn't break. And for, for using the boot, we decided to go with BOA. And the reason we do this is uh, for the lower zone, we use the side mount to close it. And then for the upper zone, we use the uh, coil system. And then when you go skinning up, you close this lower area and then your ankle is fully packed. And the upper area, you can keep open. You can open the collar on the back. And then with this, while you walk, you have a very wide angle that can offer you a lot of uh, uh, length for your straps. And to make this boot waterproof and uh, resistant against cold, we use a membrane booty that is fixed within the shell. So the outer shell basically is designed to give you support and uh, allow you to, to function very well on the technical side. And then this booty keeps all the snow and cold and water out around your feet. And with this way, even if the boot is open, which you cannot avoid using this boot for hiking, you will have dry and warm feet. And then all you have to do at night is just open it as much as possible and then the membrane will dry it by itself. And then on the inside, we use uh, the setup from our custom liner, which is the most premium thermo liner that we have in our line. And then made it in a way that is as thin as possible, as light as possible, and then also as supportive as possible. We have a toe area that's flexible in all directions, 3D, but it's also heat moldable, so you can fit it to your feet. But you don't have to do this. And then for the side patch, we use a big uh, Velcro piece where you can put extra patches to increase your heel hold. The back and the tongue and the upper part is perforated foam so your feet can breathe and we can do this because we have the membrane as a booty within the shoe and it's kind of using layers for your upper body this one keeps you warm and this one keeps you dry and then with the perforation it can uh, transmit the, 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 the air and then of course we use our, our heel harness system and it's the upgraded version as well that gives some extra support for your ankle to avoid like this uh, bending towards the side. It's customizable, but as I just said, you don't have to do this. On the tongue, we use this pattern that uh, gives the chin an extra comfort and it closes extra tight around. 
and then with these little pillows they make sure that you're very comfortable around your chin. Inside of the liner we use in the heel the cat tongue material that we already use in our custom line and what this does is it make you slide in very well and very fast but to go out little little uh, uh, hooks hold your socks down and then this is designed to be very good for hiking and it keeps your ankle locked in place and the most important thing about this boot we have a different last than with all our other snowboard boots. Usually we have a forward lean that is designed to make your boot extremely rideable. And the customer that wants to buy this boot is all spending more time hiking up than riding down. And therefore we use the upright last and bring them in a more upright position like in a hiking uh, thing. So all in all, it's designed for the way up and then designed in a way that it gives you the best performance all the way down and those are designed for a day-to-day -day snowboard use and also are able to make up. The durability of the, of the boots and uh, what, what we do on all our snowboard boots and that's why I always forget it we use the uh, classical lasting way like old shoe making tra tradition is uh, you have a lasting board and then the upper comes like which is the lasting board is between the outsole and the upper and then the upper goes all around the lasting board then will be bended over like this and then will be glued on this side and this side and what this process does is it makes the boot very very stable it's the traditional way to use uh, uh, shoes and it's uh, the old hand making way and uh, nowadays because for the industrial production it's more common to use california stitching which is a very soft lasting board and then the upper and the lasting board connect in this way and will be stitched here. So the lasting board we use is harder and then with the way we glue it to the upper it gives some extra years to the, to the uh, lasting of the boot. And then with the rubber end we really try to protect every area that get in touch with rocks or with the binding and therefore be more stable. And then all the area where we have stitching that is necessary to fix the boot we use triple stitching to secure that this is uh, not breaking. Okay, thank you. And if I'm a normal snowboarder, splitboarder who goes like maybe five to ten tours a year, so how many years can I use the, this boot, for example, the Deluxe XV? Like the, 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 the classic way a snowboard boot has to last, like from the standard, is a 70 days and our average is between really depends on the way you use it 100 and 150 for this segment because we know it's uh, some extra last so you get a good a good years uh, uh, some good years out of this if you have a heavy user of course you have to change it here and then but if you just go five to ten tools and then maybe have 20 days of snowboarding you can look into five years of using this without any problem. So a normal holiday steer from Hamburg who goes 10 days a year yeah. have fun with it like 10 years or yeah, something like easy that. going. Yeah, for sure. Right. Yeah. And then one reason, like I think it's, that's a funny thing, it, in, it always happens in summer but it also happens in winter, it's like people tend to lose their sh uh, outsoles. Like okay. you, you, go in the, you go hiking and then you find some soles on the yeah. floor. And, uh, Often people use TPU to connect the rubber part with the upper and the TPU has a, a life span of 15 years and after 15 years the material completely disappears and then all of a sudden it, 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 it delaminates and that's the reason we always use EVA and rubber because uh, this is way longer lasting. You get easily 20 years out of EVA so and the TPU is between 10 and 15 years until it collapses. Okay. And then EVA will not collapse, but it will get like really, really soft in the end. Okay. And just a theoretical question. Mm -hmm. If I want to change the sole because the grip is not so good anymore, is it possible or is it very difficult? It is possible to, to change the Vibram part, yeah. but you need a really good uh, 
shoemaker to do this. Like the, the, all, the old guys, yeah. they for sure can do this. They just grind the rest of the rubber and then glue a new one on. But it depends. The one in the supermarkets that do keys and shoes, they might not be able to do this. <laughs> all right. Cool. Thank you very much. Yeah.